Welcome to a new episode of Entheogenic Renaissance. What if I told you that they have forbade us to talk about it? What if I told you that all the information that you've been told about psychedelic substances is pure bullshit? <laughs> I've got a lot of facts. But yeah, don't worry, of course I'm not gonna throw some fake news at you. I got proven facts, so if you have something to say, Put your facts in the comments and let's have a conversation. Other than that, so-called forbidden substances, illegal substances, or as they are called, psychedelics or entheogens can not only treat mental illnesses, they can change human life. I'm going to talk about stigma today, all right? Okay. So what the fuck is stigma? And this is a really interesting topic, at least to my view. Of course, not many would agree. But nevertheless, if we are planning to talk about the therapeutic potential of entheogens in society, we are eventually planning to face a wall of stigma. Misunderstanding, misinformation, taboo, or however you call it. Basically, this is a topic that cannot be discussed out loud. Well, of course, depending on the society, if you live in Australia, you can go to the therapist and get a prescription for MDMA-assisted therapy if you have a treatment-resistant depression or PTSD, for example, in some countries as well, like Canada, United States, uh, UK, not really. But anyway, uh, Switzerland, you, EU is heading that way. Slowly, gradually, there are elections happening soon. Hopefully somebody will go to those politicians and tell them to reintroduce, yeah, I'm saying reintroduce, entheogens into the medical clinical system of treating various mental illnesses. 300 million people all over the world suffer from mental illnesses, like depression, PTSD. Just think about it. I don't know what is the size of your country, like in terms of number of people who live there. I guess you're watching this from different locations around the globe. And definitely the numbers are not that big unless you're from China or India. But imagine those people, poor souls, they're suffering because there's no solution. And of course, there's Big Pharma who's got a solution for you, some SSRIs. Or not only, as you now know, Johnson & Johnson have their own psychedelic drug called Spravato, if I remember correctly. But yeah, what are they doing? They're providing a consumer product available out there for people. And of course, if people don't use it properly, don't take precaution measures, it could affect them and harm them. But what if I told you that a drug can heal and kill? <laughs> Ridiculous, right? But you can die of an overdose from Tylenol? Yeah, why not? I mean, don't do it. <laughs> don't test it, of course. But yeah, you can. However, you cannot die of an overdose of psilocybin mushrooms. Right? Check it. If you don't believe me, those are the facts. But it doesn't mean that they're extremely safe, even though they are. People still can do some stupid shit. So before you ever consider consuming them. First, remember about the laws in the country that you're located at, and of course, the precaution measures that I've talked about in a separate episode called How to Avoid Bad Trip. Just Google that stuff and watch it first. But there are countries where not only entheogens, but all drugs are decriminalized or even legalized. For instance, there is a country called Portugal, it is Western Europe, it is at the bank of the European continent and it oversees the ocean pretty much. Why have I decided to talk about Portugal is for many reasons, so a couple of those. Recently I've stumbled upon a post of the countries where substances are legalized. Moreover, I'm currently reading a book uh, drugs for adults or something like that. I don't remember the exact title, but I guess if you want, if you're eager to learn what that book is, put it in the comments and I'll get back to you, all right? Because I cannot keep everything in my head and unfortunately I cannot spend that much time to prepare for each and every episode. So sometimes I'm, I improvise. Please do accept my apologies. But if you like it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. 
Let's move. So what are the types of the stigma, the one that I started to talk about? First, I need to take a sip of tea. By the way, fun fact or not, I don't know. Did you know that Sri Lanka and Ceylon is the same? No, like literally. Uh, the country Sri Lanka that I recently been at and that is also waging a war on drugs, which is ridiculous, stupid, pointless. Ceylon is the name of the country prior to occupancy by white conquerors. Again, Portugal. So, in that book, there was actually, by the way, the entire book is written by scientists who originally, the early, at the beginning of his career, was studying drugs. That only psychedelics or theogens, how I prefer to call them, but broader spectrum, let's put it this way, as well as heroin, cocaine, and other substances. So he wasn't consuming and eventually he started to... So he consumes heroin. Imagine, right? A person who was working at NIDA, National Institution of Drug... Uh, shit, abuse? No, I don't think it's abuse, it's something different. Anyway, ah, of America probably, yeah. Anyway, so this is one of the official organizations in the United States overseeing the control, or not control, research of uh, substances and drugs in particular. So that guy is consuming heroin occasionally, he's not an addict, imagine that. So I actually, by reading this book, haven't finished it yet, I've uh, come to learn that I don't know that much about heroin. Actually, people die mostly from alcohol. Can you imagine that? All the drugs in the world, the most dangerous one is alcohol. If you don't believe me, check the facts. They're there. You may not agree with them, but this is the sad truth. Right, so quickly, Portugal. So prior to legalizing all drugs, they had 100,000 of consumers or overdoses. Shit, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's consumers. Consumers of uh, heroin. After they legalized all drugs, they got 25,000 of consumers. Of heroin what the fuck would you say right i mean how come but this this is how it works because if you prohibit something people want it more if you allow it people are not that interested in it well except for alcohol <laughs> of course because it is being promoted everywhere you know whenever you come to a party and they offer you a drink and i recently been to one so i was in delhi in holly it's a celebration springtime celebration in western world is also known as easter ishtar i guess but anyway so people celebrate the coming of the springtime and, you know, it was a lot of colors, a lot of music, Google, it's a really colorful uh, festival and it's very nice to be at that festival while on the Theogens especially, but not only. So anyway, I come to the party and then they offer me a drink and there's like big bar of alcohol, like a lot of bottles and they offer me a drink and like, nah, thanks. And you know, they like look at you strangely, like something's wrong with you. Like either you're sick or I don't know, you're in meds or like, why do you refuse a drink of alcohol? This is ridiculous, right? But anyway, this is like common drug known, the most common on earth, and it kills the most amount of people of all the drugs. Okay, let's just stop there for a moment. But Going back to the stigma, there are three types of stigma. So the first one would be social. Second one would be structural and third one self-stigmatization. Yeah, I guess you can call it this way. Anyway, what is social? So, you know, it's not common. The society is being kind of looked at down. I, I guess you cannot say that. No. Something that is not being supported, let's put it this way, by the society, you know, people blame and, you know, put a lot of, like, disagreement with anybody who is consuming or touching that stigmatized topic. Structural is more about, you know, like institutions and the public education and uh, everything that is related to the institutional aspects of it, like controlling the narrative, let's put it this way, of the society in which you are located at. And they are telling you that, you know, this is a taboo topic, you don't discuss it in the open and, you know. Self-stigmatization is a third aspect, is that when you are self-censoring yourself and blaming yourself and telling yourself that you're not, I don't know, a good person because you either 
think about it or talk about it or if we're talking about substances consume it because stigma after all is not only about the substances stigma concerns other topics and there are other topics that people are triggered by like mental health oh it's not that common to talk about mental health or depression or ptsd but it should be normal i mean people suffer and it's totally okay to discuss it as well as other topics such as menstruation ah okay and men are typically i don't know either blown away or you know they're they redden because they feel extremely uncomfortable to talk about this topic but this is like totally normal physiology for half of the population of the entire world which is four billion people okay but even out of those four billion people not all of them i i'd say not even like 30 percent can openly talk about menstruation because of all the stigma in the society and because of the patriarchy that's been spread around that is uh, limiting women from you know just discussing in the open the, the, their physiology which is ridiculous i mean they should be able to have this opportunity in any society but anyway let's go back to stigma so how does it impact different aspects of life like say research or i don't know individual health so for instance when we're talking about the research of the therapeutic potential of entheogens stigma around the world is prohibiting other countries other i mean like the rest of the world except for some western countries that are gathering at icpr on between june 6th and 8th of 2024 for the conference yeah, but anyway, I'm supporting Open Foundation and I've recently been included as a part of their community. It was so fascinating. I had a meeting with some of the people and it's so unusual to meet a fellow psychonaut, you know, it's just, uh, it's so nice. So uh, what I was saying is that the research is limited because of the stigma that is there, limits people, institutions and, you know, individuals to research topics. And I've probably told you yeah i did uh, about a person who i've met on linkedin so she's from estonia she did a phd on ayahuasca and it's out there in the open and if you would like to get a link put it in the comment i'll get back to you and send it over because it's worth reading it's like really brilliant she's got a lot of jokes in there but she was going through the struggle as well while uh, writing it because of the taboo of the topic and the stigma around it Okay, so the research is being limited and you, you cannot properly allocate resources because not all the governments are okay with it, not all the banking, financial and other institutions are okay with it. And for instance, when I opened the legal entity in Cyprus a year ago, I was struggling for a year to open a bank account for it because I wanted to invest money in hemp production in India and I told to the banks and they said no because this is a risky topic. Why? It's fucking legal. But the taboo, the stigma, the, I don't know, the potential toxicity of the topic limits people from not only like funding but researching the topic in the first place. Individual health is a very intricate thing in aspect is you know whenever somebody is consuming a substance whether it's infusion or something else because of the stigma they cannot admit it right because they may be punished by law or in case they get hospitalized you know if they were just walking around and somebody hit them while drunk driving and they are in a hospital they cannot tell that they were just high because it's illegal that's why they cannot get proper support and whenever we're talking about marginalized people those that are less protected from the dangers of the society and the system they are the most vulnerable ones because they suffer the most they cannot share out loud in if they're suffering from substance use disorder they're pretty much in the dark spot because there is nobody who would help them out simply because there is stigma around the topic of fucking drugs but alcohol is a drug remember this alcohol is a drug okay coffee is a mind-altering plant psychoactive substance so drugs are there drugs are common we should be discussing them and we should be 
talking about them, not only about the mythical dangers. By the way, when we're talking about dangers of uh, so-called drugs and narcotics, can you please share like specific links to studies that say that they're extremely harmful for one's health? I'm really interested to find like at least one link, you know? Just put it there and let's discuss because I'm, I'm really intrigued. But let's go back to stigma. So how do you eliminate stigma? Easy peasy. <laughs> Not really. Education. That's what I'm doing here. Educating, spreading information, sharing the knowledge that I've acquired and gathered through reading hundreds of publications, news articles about psychedelics and theogens, their therapeutic potential, and clinical trials and studies, watching hundreds of videos dedicated to the topic and listening to hundreds of hours of podcasts on neuroscience from Humor and Lab Podcast. No, but seriously, I read a lot of books and gather a lot of information. That's why I'm sharing this information. I strongly believe that people should have access to information so that they cannot harm themselves. If there is a phrase in Russian, if you're, if you're informed, you're armed. Yeah, I think. It, so anyway, if you know what to do, what not to do with yourself, with your body, with your psyche, you are causing yourself less harm. Therefore, I'm neither condoning nor condemning yeah. use of psychedelics or entheogens. However, I do recognize that people will be using them. Thus far, I'm sharing information about their therapeutic potential, but of course, safety measures, precautions as well. So, how do we eliminate stigma? Share information, so don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and you know, send it over here and there to your friends who may be interested in the topic, but are quite shy to talk about it. That's why there's this talking head who does the talking about the stigmatized topic, and you don't need to do anything. You can just send the link and tell them, like, what do you think? There's this crazy Russian guy talking about mental health periods uh, and, you know, entheogen. What the fuck are the entheogen? Oh, psychedelic. Psychedelic? He talks about psychedelics? Yeah. I mean, check it out. That's a weird guy. But anyway, ask their opinion. Like, what do they think? You can always tell that it's it's not you who are interested. It's just this, this guy. He talks about it. But anyway, go back to the education. So I've noticed recently while I was working on a menstruation project that is dedicated to improve lives of women in India, that is still looking for funds in case you know somebody who's willing to fund it let me know because we need to make it happen and the minimum amount of money that will require is fifteen thousand dollars just that but anyway um i've noticed that the education system is outdated like completely outdated all the knowledge that is being provided by the schools all over the world and i'm not talking about india here it is simply outdated it's like 100 years old I mean, the Industrial Revolution time old and, you know, whatever people get at schools nowadays is just, it, it's not relevant. I mean, some of the knowledge, yes, is critical, it is important, I acknowledge that, but the majority of it, I'd say, is just pointless. They don't teach you life skills, they don't teach you modern science and information. And, you know, for instance, again, we're talking about psychedelics and the therapy. I mean, SSRI has been invented, when was it? Like, when the Berlin's Wall was there, right? Like, 40 years ago. But psychedelics been there for millennia. Nobody fucking knows about it, okay? Because it's stigma. Fucking stigma that we need to address and beat and share the knowledge, spread scientifically proven data. And, of course, don't try to change people's mind. If they're, you know, they're not willing to, they're not gonna change. That, I mean, you can offer them watch a Netflix TV show, How to Change Your Mind, or read uh, Michael Pollan's book. But other than that, if you find yourself in a spot where you're quarreling with another person, you're not gonna convince them. You're never gonna win an argument. So don't even bother trying. But what you could do is to share information, spread it further. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Right, as usual but then again uh, how can you also eradicate stigma talking about it out loud and you know it is hard of course it is challenging but the other day when i had a meeting with a fellow psychonaut that i met him through open foundation uh, we've been having a lunch at a restaurant and we've been talking about psychedelics and i could see people just turning their heads whenever i mentioned psychedelics and in Lithuania, i'd say quite orthodox society 
But of course, somebody's gonna cancel me for saying that. Anyway, people are not used to psychedelics. They've uh, not that often, not that, not that old, not that long time ago, they've uh, outlawed HHC, which is a derivative of cannabis, which was allowed in other countries because of a loophole. But Lithuania, particularly, they're like, no, 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 we're gonna prohibit that. So even though, for instance, medical cannabis is legal, there is no access to it. So I'd say it's an orthodox country, but yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, and of course, uh, we can share information about therapy, about uh, recent discoveries, but also topics like menstruation and mental health are critical because I just remind you, 300 million people are suffering from mental health issues worldwide. And it's, it's no fucking joke. People burn out. And they go, you know, kill themselves or they go consuming drugs. And I'm talking about heroin, I'm talking about alcohol. Because if you, by the way, if you're consuming alcohol, even like one drink a day, like one drink, or, you know, you don't drink for the entire week and you take then like five drinks per like week in one day, in one sit, in one go, it is exactly the same. So what you're doing, you're doing the three aspects. So first of all, you're fucking up your sleep cycle, okay? You're disrupting your sleep and sleep is fundamental for strong mental health. Second thing that you do, you, do, you kill your microbiome, right? So when you, you know, get an injury like this, typically what people do is they put some spirit or hard liquor that disinfects. And when you're putting alcohol inside yourself, you're killing all those nice bacteria that live in your gut and create your mental health or health in general in the first place. And there was this third thing. Oh yeah, you increase the level of cortisol, like permanent level of cortisol. What is cortisol? It's a stress hormone, although some amounts of cortisol are helpful, but if you are experiencing high levels of cortisol, especially in the evening on a daily basis, it means that you are about to go into depression. <laughs> Not necessarily. But yeah, you're probably suffering and it's not good for your entire health. So don't drink alcohol. Uh, I mean, you do whatever you want. I just stopped drinking in November 2023 and that's why I'm, you know, pro talking about it. But anyway, let's talk a bit about future because I'm looking at the time and I think I'm talking too much. So future is bright. Although climate is not that bright. And they say, you know, the global climate change is actually there. And I believe because I know because I've talked about it a lot. But one thing is important to understand is that people need to address it like seriously and start believing in it, you know, because there are still people out there who don't believe in global warming. Why would they? But global climate change is something that you cannot argue with and it's changing and Earth is going to be there. Us humans we can die quite fast, actually. So a paradigm shift is required. And for that to happen, of course, future is withholding a lot of surprises. So luckily, entheogens are still, in spite of all the stigma, in spite of all the limitations, they have made their way through back to humans. And they are helping us treat not only mental illnesses, but addictions like substance use disorder, alcohol use disorder, gambling use disorder, or some other issues and actually chronic pains in some cases as well and anxiety for palliative patients those that are facing death in like terminal stage of their uh, cancer so they help they help alleviate suffering and they work and there's a lot of data if you don't believe me I just you know there is definitely somebody here who is watching this who can send a couple of links in the comments and show it to others who are still skeptical somehow. I don't know why, because whatever you've been told about psychedelics is pure bullshit. Like literally, all the scary stuff, all the, you know, the, the, the things that they say that it's gonna destroy your brain or fry your brain or it's gonna harm you. It's just such a bullshit. The reason I'm saying is that I did the study, there, there's no evidence. All those claims are false. They were created, I mean, out of nothing. So people just imagined them and then imposed on all because they are prohibited, because there is no explanation. I mean, humans are irrational creatures that I give you for sure. Anyway, let's try and summarize it all. What is required is a paradigm shift. So stop stigmatizing entheogens and talk about it. Share the knowledge, spread it further. Talk about it in the open and don't be afraid. You will not be prosecuted. I mean, knowledge should be available and knowledge 
it's not prohibited. I mean, what prohibited is either in some countries consumption, possession, purchase, sale, but you can talk about it unless you're in North Korea or Russia. <laughs> I, I, I mean, even in Russia, you can talk about it, of course. It's just, you know, people are not willing to because there are too many risks. I mean, you can even cannot call war by its name. So if you say war out loud and if somebody hears you, they can you know, go to the police, file a report, and you are facing three years in jail. So, you know, people are afraid. But anyway, talk about it. Break the stigma. Share information. Because psychedelics or entheogens, I would prefer to call them, they can help alleviate human suffering and mental illnesses, depression, PTSD, anxiety, substance use disorder, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And of course, it is happening. Entheogenic renaissance is happening, regardless of whether you want it or not. But what you can do is to become part of it and destigmatize the topic. Because once we do that, we're able to destigmatize other topics, such as mental health in the first place and menstruation as well. Why not? I mean, it, it's a topic that should be discussed in the open. And it is a problem for half of the population of the entire world because they face the consequences. Do you think it's easy to have periods? I don't know, I'm a man, but I believe it is tough. But I, I strongly believe because I did the research and, you know, um, you see my wife suffering from time to time. But anyway, uh, let's destigmatize all those topics. Start with intuitions, but then not necessarily. You can start with each topic, but educate people, share facts, share knowledge, share science-based evidence, tools, podcasts, books, whatever. And if you're in need of a personal coach, head to me. Because I'm about to become a psychedelic assisted coach or not, or provide coaching with psychedelics as a method of assisting. I don't know how to call it. Anyway. So I'm still learning and probably by the time I publish this, no, I'm not going to be on the uh, Costa Rica, is it? Right. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments as usual. Otherwise, thank you for watching. And until next time, break the fucking stigma. Break the stigma. <laughs> Share the knowledge. Knowledge is legal. Possession is not. Break the stigma. Talk about psychedelics. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Maybe the dog will appear, I don't know, I mean, yeah, she doesn't choose a moment. I guess she does, right? It's not that I do. <laughs>